hello everyone. Uh, I'm Ali Valizadeh from DHI Water and Environment in Australia. I'm going to talk about the regular wave effects on negatively buoyant jets. My co-authors are Jason Antonucci from DHI and Grant Griffith from uh, Water Corporation. Uh, for the rest of the presentation, I will switch off the camera. This work is a part of a bigger project on the evaluation and supporting the design of desalination plants for Water Corporation in Western Australia, considering the sole role in the dilution and mixing of the brine emanating from desalination plants, with the focus on designing a new desalination plant in Alchemos, a coastal suburb in Perth. Uh, the project is done by DHI. And the HPC resources for our high computational demand studies have been provided by POSI and is greatly acknowledged. Why the study of wave impact on negatively buoyant jets is important? Well, our experience from over 10 years of measurements at the Perth Seawater Desalination Plant in Queen Anna and Benningop has indicated that wave effects on the mixing and dilution of brine discharge from desalination plants may be more complex and significant than originally thought. Um, in, in this picture, the significant wave height time series at Alchemos model with DHI tools and verified by field measurements show that proposed Alchemos facilities are in the soil active zones. A similar condition applies to the southern seawater desalination plant in Benningop. Um, however, the wave-induced mixing is an unquantified mechanism for the permitting and operation of these facilities. And so far, we don't know if it is beneficial or de deleterious. Technically, discharging under gravity into shallow waters results in lower cost due to a smaller length of pipeline but this exposes the outfall to more variable back pressure due to the increased importance of wave action in shallow waters. If the diffuser is placed in shallower waters, this variation in pressure increases by approximately 10 to 17 percent. On the other hand, tunneling costs are in the range of $30,000 per meter. So optimizing the location with respect to the soil condition has significant cost implications. Uh, significant amounts of work have been reported on the dynamics of negatively buoyant jets uh, in uh, stagnant water. Um, and the wave interaction with plumes is more focused on the positively buoyant jets and only few experiments are found on uh, negatively buoyant jets interaction with waves. Wave effects on horizontally discharged negatively buoyant plumes were investigated by Bass et al and demonstrated that discharge opposite to the wave direction increases dilution, as we found for the positively buoyant case. Uh, the only paper that discusses wave effects on negatively buoyant discharges at an angle other than horizontal is by Ferrari et al. Uh, they find importantly that dilution under waves for negatively buoyant jets at 67 degrees to the horizontal decreases relative to stagnant conditions, uh, with this reduction being worse for larger waves. Possible wave effects on a plume are as internal diffuser hydraulics, uh, near-field jet plume behavior, and far-field behavior. The first one is not the concept of this talk, and we consider a constant port discharge. The near field mixing, which is typically within the first 50 meters of the diffuser and is primarily controlled by the diffuser design, is the main part of this study. This stage includes uh, the rise of a jet and fall of a plume. The far field mixing, which is typically dominated by the environmental mixing process, is also beyond the aim of this presentation. For the near field, the primary control on the dilution achieved from a negatively buoyant jet is the densimetric fruit number, uh, where you see here that the U is uh, the jet velocity, D is the port diameter, uh, G is the gravitational acceleration, and G prime is the reduced gravity. SI is the dilution at the impact point, and XI is the impact point distance from the port. Here two videos of Ferrari's experiments are showing the comparison of an uh, angled plume in silent water on the left 
and in the presence of a wave on the right. For desalination brine outfalls, jets are normally placed in 10 to 15 meters of water depths, with the design such that the plumes almost touch the free surface before falling back to the bed under gravity. The time taken for a water particle to travel from the diffuser back to the bed is approximately 35 to 40 seconds, uh, while wave periods uh, can be between 5 to 15 seconds. So during the travel time, the plume will experience multiple wave periods. The dilution ratio due to the wave action with respect to the stagnant condition is shown here. Uh, as mentioned before, wave effects are not a part of the standard design of outfalls. This is because for positively buoyant jets, waves are typically found to be beneficial to mixing. And the same belief has been extended to the negatively uh, buoyant jets. Despite that, Ferrari's team found that the uh, dilution on the waves for angled negatively buoyant jets decreases relative to stagnant conditions, and the reduction is larger for uh, larger waves. Uh, cases with realistic uh, wave uh, conditions were seen to achieve dilutions which were just 40% of the equivalent stagnant case. We plot dilution data from Ferrari et al. against the ratio of jet discharge velocity to wave orbital velocity. This shows the trend of the graph is opposite of the positively buoyant jets. The velocity ratio for conditions likely to be experienced at burning up and alkimos is in the range of uh, 7 to 20. This is within the range of those values presented by Ferrari in which dilution decreases by the wave strength. To test the accuracy of Ferrari findings, we set a numerical test campaign where a full nonlinear solver developed in the OpenFOAM CFD package is used. The solver resolves the Navier-Stokes equations of three phases of flows in which brine and seawater are miscible while air is immiscible and is used to consider the free surface oscillations caused by the ocean waves. The numerical model was verified by recovering the theoretical results of Stokes first order waves for all short, long, small, and large waves. On the left frame, the horizontal and vertical velocity profiles during one wave period are shown for the largest wave used in the study. And on the right figure, the surface elevation time series of different waves are presented. These results show that the accuracy of surface elevations is more than 97%. The numerical model was verified by recovering experimental results of negatively buoyant jets in stagnant conditions. On the left frame, the time averaged brine concentration is shown on top of the Roberts results. Uh, on the right plot, the variation of lower boundary dilution with distance from the pipe outlet are compared with the experimental data. Good agreement is also found between the CFD model and the laboratory results, giving us confidence in the implementation of the CFD model. The test table selected is based on the design implemented at the Southern Seawater Desalination Plant. The numerical, uh, the numerical wave flume is same as the experimental tank used by Ferrari et al. Uh, but enlarged by a scaling factor of 25, which results in water depths of 10 meters when fruit number is 30. Snapshots of a subset of our simulations are shown in this picture. These snapshots indicate significant bifurcation of the discharging jet for the wave height of 1 meter. For the larger wave case, uh, H of 3 meters, the terminal rise height of the jet is severely reduced by the presence of the wave. Um, these results indicate that dilution and impact point are likely to be strongly affected by the wave conditions. The results of different wave height and periods and their effect on the location of impact point and dilution are shown here. Gamma is the angle between wave direction and uh, jet orientation. These results are presented for the return location of the plume to the discharge orifice, as well as just above the bed. The dimensionless uh, dilution and impact point in a stagnant uh, condition are 1.68 and 2.46. As you can see here, the majority of tests focus on a wave of 12 second period, 
with varying wave heights tested across the range. Targeted experiments uh, with longer and shorter uh, wave periods were also selected. Waves were propagated in the opposite direction to the jet discharge to mimic the most likely case in the field, with one test set uh, perpendicular to the jet direction. As the wave height increases, the impact point moves closer to the jet such that for the largest waves, the impact point is on the downstream side of the jet origin. Dilution decreases with wave height as already indicated. Some uh, preliminary tests of the effect of wave period have been conducted for a condition when wave height is set to a constant of one meter. Uh, these results show that while the position of impact point changes by wave period, the dilution is less affected by the increasing wave period under the experimental conditions tested here. If we plot the dilution ratio as a function of the jet to wave velocity ratio, we can see that both the laboratory and CFD results show that large waves equivalent to a small velocity ratios significantly decrease the dilution at impact point. However, for small waves with the velocity ratios larger than 20, the results from Ferrari et al. show that dilution is greater than the stagnant condition, while CFD results show the presence of wave results in dilution less than the stagnant case. These conflicting results require further investigation. It should be noted uh, that all these wave effects studies are based on a constant discharge from the source. It is quite possible that the waves also induce a time varying discharge rate of significant magnitude due to hydraulic effects within the diffuser. To summarize the study, a CFD model has been constructed consisting of three phases, allowing for the simulation of wave effects on negatively buoyant jets. This represents a significant achievement and can be used for further improved uh, desalination plant outfall designs. Despite some uncertainties about the results of weaker waves, CFD and experimental results confirm that the presence of waves uh, reduces uh, dilution quite substantially, typically between 20 and 60 percent lower than the stagnant water case. And finally, Larger wave amplitudes uh, tend to result in lower dilution, though these trends are not as strong in the CFD results as they were in the laboratory results. Thank you very much for your attention.